Good morning, folks. We've got a number of interesting stories today and some alerts. We are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com and looking at the last 24 hours on our star. Every flavor of quiet. The silent sunspot continues marching towards the limb to the right. Solar wind is calm and calming slightly more. In fact, it was such a docile day on our star, we'll take a quick look at something from yesterday in a bit more detail. That coronal surge of plasma from the active region is more impressive with the Earth scale next to it. Looking at the coronal holes to forecast upcoming solar wind, we find a number of dark patches, but as coronal holes go, these are small, sparse, and most are at too high of latitude to influence geospace 1AU down the line. From space weather to Earth weather, lightning lit up the skies and then released a deluge in India. Eleven died from the wind, flooding, and lightning getting to be that season again there. The major weather story begins tonight in the south central states and will produce a three-day onslaught of severe weather across the U.S. Tornadoes, hail, and high winds are likely, so eyes open starting tonight. Folks, the Lyrid meteor shower is beginning. For the next week, it will reach peak bombardment of the upper atmosphere and should put on a nice little show for those who can get out there and watch. This is meteorshowers.org. Up next, we go to Chandra. They say an odd X-ray signature transient is likely to be the collision of small stars. They like the merger idea, as usual, and with all the usual bells and whistles like explosions and cosmic jets. This came out of the deep field south, Chandra's deepest X-ray shot. Astronomers have taken what used to be just a few pixels in the heart of the galaxy and mapped out full star-forming regions, including some operating at up to three times the star formation efficiency. The explanation is that something special exists in the region, which is not much of an explanation, and they can only guess what that something special might be. The methane-ethane ratios in Titan Lakes is baffling scientists who are finding the methane aspect vastly dominant. Cassini apparently still delivering science two years after its demise. Just a quick movie here from SLAC. A molecule movie showing how the breaking of a bond causes the reverberation throughout the entire chain. Well, this next story is fascinating. They say that neutrinos are arriving from deep space faster than photons do in some circumstances. That would be light, by the way. The explanation is that an opaque photon shell causes waiting time where the energy allows neutrino emission first, but not the photons. In the case they studied, it was more than an 800 second delay. We've got a geoengineering piece by someone who does clearly want to explore the space, but who also adequately identifies the broad scale and potentially unpredictable worldwide effects of trying to mess with the weather anywhere. Last but not least, a team out of China is making one of the most extreme solar claims ever. They say that the corona, the atmosphere of the sun, is rotating faster than the photosphere below. They say the circulation excess in the corona is anomalous as well, indicating that small-scale magnetic activity is responsible for coronal heating. But indeed, the bigger part of the story would be the first ever reporting of a coronal rotation less than 27 days, and given its bigger circle than the photosphere, means it's moving considerably more quickly. Just another way we know the sun still has a secret. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. If you click the Suspicious Observer's name anywhere here on YouTube, it takes you to our channel page. Scroll down to find a number of playlists that will get you caught up quickly. Those are highly recommended viewing. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.